an apparatus using or applying mechanical power and having several parts, each with a definite function and together performing a particular task. The definition of machine and in many ways the definition of a piano. The mechanical ingenuity that goes into a single piano key is far greater than meets the eye. And sure, the case can be made that pianos are more of an instrument than a machine, but well, it's right there in the similar words. And the piano, much like conventional machines, has gone through many versions since its initial design, each iteration trying to improve in some capacity on its predecessor. One of the more obvious characteristics of the piano is its keys. They are the connection between the performer and the instrument, and are the gateway to the creation of its sound. But why do the keys stop at the seemingly arbitrary number of 88? Why not have more? And for that matter, why not have less? Well, there are several reasons, but before going into them, let's first take a look at the initial blueprints for this machine. Italian instrument maker Bartolomeo Cristofori is credited with inventing the piano in the early 1700s. At the time, it was known as the Forte Piano. It was invented sort of as a successor to the harpsichord to fill a desire for dynamic control, hence the name Forte Piano, which literally translates from Italian to loud, soft. The first Forte Pianos Cristofori built are reported to have 49 keys. This number gradually increased in parallel with the musical innovations of composers at the time eventually increasing to 61 keys, 66, 76, 82, 85, and finally in the late 1880s, Steinway debuted the 88-key piano, and the 88 keys has remained as a standard until today. So from 1700 to the 1880s, the number of piano keys increased from 49 to 88. But from the 1880s until today, the 88-key standard has remained the same. Why? Well, it's kind of like cars on the freeway. It doesn't take that long to go from 0 to 70. Most cars have the ability to do so, and why wouldn't you want to get to your destination faster? The same can be said for the Forte piano at first. It wasn't particularly challenging to add on to the initial 49 key design, and why wouldn't you want to increase the number of sounds you can produce? And sure, your Prius has the ability to go 80, 90, even 100 miles per hour, but as your speed increases, so does the risk. Go too fast, and you'll end up in the ditch on the side of the road. Metaphorically speaking, the same can be said for pianos over 88 keys. And here's why. One of the main reasons is the auditory range of the human ear. As the frequency level of a pitch nears the upper and lower limits of the ear's auditory range, it becomes more and more difficult to distinguish the pitches. It starts to sound less like distinct pitches, and more like an unrecognizable mush and the piano's current 88 key range already experiences some of these issues at the extremes of its range. Take Ligeti's A2 number 13 as an example. It features both very low and very high pitches played simultaneously, and as you get more and more extreme, it becomes difficult to hear the distinct pitches. As you can hear, the extremes in the current 88 key standard are at times already difficult to hear, and much higher or lower than that becomes almost impossible to do so. Going hand in hand with the biological limits of the human ear is the lack of desire from composers to write notes that extend beyond the current 88 key structure. Few composers write for notes beyond the 88 keys, and part of that is due to the standardization of the 88 key piano but also who would intentionally write for notes that are less accessible to the human ear. Composers in the 18th and 19th centuries, Beethoven in particular, wrote pieces of music that could not physically be played on the pianos they had at the time. 
but the notes they composed were still well within the auditory spectrum. So piano manufacturers built bigger pianos. And while there have been selective instances of composers writing for notes beyond the current 88 keys, it's nowhere near enough people to warrant raising the 88 key standard. So sure, the sound would be muddied, but beyond that, the physics of it don't cooperate particularly well either. Added keys in the bass would require longer strings, so the case would have to be lengthened, the cast iron frame would have to be built to withstand the added tension, the soundboard would have to be enlarged, given how many parts would have to be custom made, and how labor intensive the process of building a piano already is, few piano manufacturers find it worth their time and money to invest in pianos over 88 keys. Now, there are some pianos that do have more than 88 keys. Bosendorfer has a 97 key model, and Stewart & Sons has a 108 key model. While they may seem like a gimmicky nod to Spinal Tap's Turn It Up to 11, there are a handful of pieces that make use of the keys themselves. But the added keys also enrich the sound of the standard 88 keys by taking advantage of sympathetic resonance. In a nutshell, sympathetic resonance occurs when a passive string responds to external vibrations that have harmonic likeness. So as keys within the 88 standard are pressed, their strings vibrate and cause other strings within the same harmonic series to vibrate, passively taking advantage of the additional keys strings to create an enriched sound. So all that to say, the 88 key standard probably isn't changing anytime soon. The limits of the human ear paired with the lack of composer demand and the lack of profitability of building these highly customized pianos makes its standardization generally thought of as impractical. But as music stretches more into the avant-garde, it's possible that the expansion of the 88 key standard may find its way into popularity.